All right, so what we've been given is um, tan x is negative 3 over 4. And then we've been told to say this angle is an obtuse angle, meaning it's between 180 and 90 degrees. Find the exact values of sec x and cos x. So the first thing that you can do to solve uh, such a question is to draw um, the triangle, the right angle triangle. Yeah, so on this triangle, we know to say if we put our theta there, using Pythagoras, I mean, using Soka Toa, we know to say, if we say Soka Toa, so using this, we know to say to find tan theta, you have to divide what? You have to divide um, the opposite by the adjacent. So we want to have the opposite over the adjacent. So if we uh, compare it with this number that we've been given there, we are comparing three over four. So let us first uh, forget about this negative sign. So come and use it when we start uh, writing the answers for sec and cos. So we have three over four. Hence the opposite is, uh, the opposite to this angle here is uh, three, then the adjacent to this angle is four. So we can find the hypotenuse. So how do you find the hypotenuse? Using Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem, we're going to find the hypotenuse. You know to say the hypotenuse uh, squared is equal to the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared. So to find the hypotenuse, I'm going to say the hypotenuse squared is equal to, what is the adjacent? Adjacent is three, we square it, and then we also square the opposite. Then we find this one will give us nine, and then this one will give us 16. So when you add the two, you're getting 25. So to find the square root, to find the hypotenuse, you find the square root of both sides. Hence, the hypotenuse is giving us five. So we're going to write five there. So we have managed to find all the sides of the triangle. So now we can start finding the other trig ratios. Then we've been told to say this angle, this uh, theta is an obtuse angle and it has a negative. What does it mean if it has a negative? It means that it's, um, it's, um, yeah, okay, this negative in short is just telling us to say it's uh, in the, it's, um, okay, let me draw the quadrant plane. So we have something like this. So uh, we have um, theta. So this theta I've gotten here, it's not, okay, let me not, okay, it's good that I called it theta and not x. So I've been taught to find um, sec x and cos x. Yeah, so this theta here is uh, just there to represent um, the angle that we find after subtracting, uh, um, after subtracting um, x from uh, 180. So what I mean is that the value, I mean, the, the angle X is somewhere on this side because we've been told to say it's um, it's an obtuse angle. It's not an acute angle. Yeah, so that's what I am trying to say. All right, so let's uh, quickly now, um, okay, so let's analyze the question. So from this same, from this same uh, triangle, we can now get the value of sec and um, cos. Uh, but of course, it's um, it's obvious that we we'll start with cos because we know to say sec x is equal to one over cos x. So we can start with finding cos and then we find um, sec. So cos theta, cos theta from this 
um, soccer tour, we can tell to say the cos theta is simply just the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what is the adjacent? So I was saying cos theta is simply just equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what is the adjacent? So the adjacent to this angle is simply just four. So the adjacent is equal to four, then over. So this is four over, the hypotenuse is five. The hypotenuse is five. Yeah, so we've been told to say um, this is an obtuse angle. Yeah, so we've been told to say this is an obtuse angle and it has a negative in, in front of it, which, which symbolizes that um, this x, this theta is not in the third quadrant. It's also not in the first quadrant because we know, we know to say in the first and in the, I mean, in the third and in the first quadrant, tan theta is what is positive. But looking at the answer that they found there, it was negative, implying that it is neither in the, it is neither in the third nor in the first quadrant. So now let us try to find the quadrant where this um, angle lies. Yeah, so let us find the quadrant where this angle lies because we've been taught to say it's an obtuse angle. It's an obtuse, then we've been taught to say it's in between what? It's in between 180 and 90 degrees. We know to say acute an acute angle is be, be between 90 and zero degrees. And then obtuse angle is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So just this is telling us that this angle is where is in the second quadrant. Because in the second quadrant, this is where you find the, the range from 90 degrees and to, I mean to 180 degrees. So this is how you do it. Yeah, so here now, we have known to say it's in the second quadrant. And we know to say in the second quadrant, cos is what? Cos is also negative. So we are going to add a negative in front there. I don't know if you have gotten the point here. Okay, so same applies to uh, sec. Sec is one of a cos. So the same answer, I'm just going to say, um, let me say sec x is equal to one over cos x. Hence the same answer, I'm just going to say one over uh, negative four over five, which will give you negative five over four, which is just the reciprocal of this. Do we have any questions on this one? I think we can proceed. So we have another one, which is part B, which says given that P sine X is equal to four. So P sine X is equal to four and the same P cos X is equal to what? Four root three, where P is greater than zero. Find the value of P and the smallest positive value of X. So this one is straightforward. How do you do that? So we just divide sine theta by cos x, I mean sine x by, I mean we divide this by that. So when we divide those, we're going to have p sine x over p cos x. And this will give us what? This side will also divide them four over four root three. So this p and that p will go. Then sine theta over cos theta, we know to say this gives us what? Tan x. So sine x over cos x will give us tan x. And this side, we're going to have this four and that four go. So it's just going to remain with one over the root of three. So to find the value of x, you simply just say x is equal to, you find the inverse tan of this answer that you have this side. So x is equal to tan inverse of one over three. So tan inverse of one over three. And then, oh, the root of three, not one over three, one over the root of three. So when you do this, so when you do this, 
you now find the reference angle. So the reference angle in this case is um, tan inverse of one over three gives us 30. So this one is 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is not the final answer. So 30 degrees is not the only answer that we have here. We also have other answers in the other quadrants because we know to say tan is positive in the first and the third quadrant. So in the first quadrant, so this one is just the reference angle. So in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant, you simply just get this same value of x. So we say x is equal to 30 degrees. But tan, this angle, when you look at this part, this part is positive. One over the root of three is positive, it's not negative. So what you do is, I also get the value of tan in the third quadrant because tan is also positive in the third quadrant. So in the third quadrant, uh, the value of x becomes 180 uh, degrees plus 30 degrees. And then the other value of x is 210 degrees. So you can try to use your calculator if you have, you are not going to be allowed to use those in the exam. So you can try to prove this, uh, try to put x where there is, um, or in turn x, where there's x here, try to replace with uh, 30, you get the answer to be one over the root of three. You also try to replace 210 there, the answer will still be one over the root of three. And then the question is saying the smallest positive value of x. So the smallest positive value of x is simply just 30 degrees. So we're going to take 30 degrees as our answer. Then we have also been asked to find the value of P. Hence to find the value of P, we say P sine, we just get one of these equations and use it to find the value. So we know to say P sine, P sine X is equal to four. So what is X that we can replace with 30? So we say P sine 30 is equal to four. So what is sine 30? So sine 30, sine 30 is simply just 0 0.5, which is the same as half. So we have P, well, the sine 30, I'm putting half there, then we have for this side, meaning the value of P becomes, when you cross multiply there, or we just say P over two is equal to four. When you cross multiply, we get P to be eight. Okay, so let's quickly move on to this last question. Do we have any questions on this one before we can proceed? Okay, so I think we can proceed. Okay. So, given that sign A is this, then cos B is that, where A is um, obtuse and B is accurate, um, find the exact value of the following. Uh, yeah, so here is just a matter of um, um, knowing the compound angle formulas for sine, um, yeah, for sine and uh, yeah, the compound angle formulas for sine, cos, and tan. Cot is simply just one over tan. So cot, simply just one over tan. So where you see cot, you can replace with one over tan. Yeah, there's no problem. So this one, the most important part is tan. So for sine, so we know to say sine A plus B is simply just equal to sine A cos, B plus sine B cos A. Yeah, so if you need a video where I explain the compound angle formulas, you can simply just uh, request for it on WhatsApp. I'll send it to you so that you can see how these equations came about. Okay, so sine N. Sign A is simply just this part. So sign A is root three over two, so I can replace root three over two there. And then sign, I mean, cos B, 
cos b is simply just um, root three over two. So root three over two, that's cos b. Then we say plus sine b. So we don't have sine b here. Now, where do we get sine b? That's where the, that's where the question comes in. So we don't have sine b, but we have cos b, we have sine a. So where do we get sine, I mean, sine b and where do we get um, cos a? Because we also don't have cos a. So where do we get them from? So from Sokatoa, we know to say Sokatoa. Let me write it here, Sokatoa. So from Sokatoa, we know to say sine A or sine theta is simply just equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite over hypotenuse. So what we've been given there is sine A. So sine A is simply just the opposite is the root three and then the hypotenuse is two. So we have our triangle, which will be like this. Then we've been taught to say A is obtuse. So you also take those into consideration. So A is obtuse, then this is what we have. So if our A is there, oh, let me not name this as A, I'll just name it as theta. So if our theta is there, we can say, um, so if our theta is there, so we can say uh, the opposite is, uh, the opposite to this theta is the root of three, then the adjacent, rather the hypotenuse is two. So to find this other part um, using Pythagoras, you're going to say um, this other part, which is the adjacent. So the adjacent, I'm sure I showed you the formula for Pythagoras. So I'm just going to do, do it directly. So this will be two squared minus the root of three squared. Because I've gotten it from um, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the adjacent squared plus the, the opposite squared. Okay, so that is how we are supposed to do it. So from there we can, um, we can find the solution. So we have four and three there. So we're going to have, sorry for that. So we're going to have the adjacent will be equal to the square root of, two squared will be four uh, minus uh, three squared will be uh, three. So, so this would be adjacent is equal to four minus three, that would be a one. So the square root of one will still give us one. So meaning this side is simply just one. Okay, so we can find the other three ratios. So if they're saying, a, uh, where is it? Okay, here, they're saying A is obtuse, meaning um, the tree ratio, meaning sine B is also going to be positive because, uh, not sine B rather, uh, cos A, coming from this one. So let me just, just, let me just say this is A. So coming from this triangle for the angle A, um, we can say, um, I'm trying to look for sine B. Okay, sine B, we'll, look, we'll find it later. Let's first find uh, cos A. Yeah, from this, um, uh, from this um, triangle for A. Okay, so for cos A, we know to say cos A is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is simply just one, then the hypotenuse is two. So meaning our cos A becomes um, one over two. Yeah, so our cos A becomes one over two, but because the angle is obtuse, so obtuse means that the angle is between 180 and 90. And then that implies it's in the second quadrant. So if it's in the second quadrant, we know to say in the second quadrant, it's only sign which is positive, but cos is what? Is negative. So meaning we're going to add a negative to this one over two. So our cos A, let me write it in advance there. So our cos A is simply just negative one over two. 
Yeah, so cos A, let me write it this side so that we don't forget cos A is equal to negative one over two. And then let us also find sign B. So sign B will also be found in a similar way. Um, we will first have to draw the triangle for sign B as well. I mean, for B. So we draw the triangle for B. So we've been given that cos B is equal to what? The root of three over two. Meaning uh, if I draw the triangle like this, and then I've been told to say B is acute. So since it's acute means that, uh, since it's acute, it means that it's in the first quadrant. So if it's in the first quadrant, meaning all the trig ratios that we are going to get from B are going to be positive. So for B, this is a triangle for B. So the hypotenuse from this, because we know to say, using Sokatoa, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is the root of three, then the hypotenuse is two. Then um, to find this other side, which is the opposite, we say, the four squared minus the root of three squared, that will give us a one, the square root of uh, square root of one is simply just one. So we put one that side. Hence we can find um, sign B. So we know to say, oh yeah, we can find sign B. So we know to say sign is simply just the uh, opposite of a hypotenuse. So the opposite to this angle is simply just one, and then the hypotenuse is what? Two. So we can say one over two. So we can say one over two is the solution for sine B. So we can put our one over two there. So here we're just remaining with, the, um, with just multiplying. So when you multiply root three and root three, you're getting three, and then everything over two times two, you're getting four. And then we have plus, then we have um, one times negative one, we're getting negative one. So let me just write negative one there. So it's a negative one over um, two times two are getting four. So when you subtract that, we're getting three minus one, that would be two over four, which is just the same as one over two. So it's as simple as this. So we've also found um, by B to be one over two. So in a similar way, we also have to solve this one. Okay. Let us also do it. So I'll do it a bit fast. I'll be a bit fast in solving this one because I'm already behind time for the second year. I'm sure they are waiting. I mean, they are waiting. So let me, let me just do it quickly. Then the next time we need to come and start from the one to the court. I don't worry, I've recorded all the sessions. I'm going to send them to you for the sake of revision. So cos A minus B, cos A minus B from the compound angle formulas, we know that this is just the same as cos um, a cos B, then uh, plus sine A sine B. So what is cos A? Cos A has been given, or oh, we found cos A, A to be one of negative one over two. So we put our negative one over two there. Then cos B, cos B was given to be the root of three over two. We say plus. Then sine A, sine A was given to be the root of three over two. And then um, we also have sine B. Sine B is one over two. So we put it there. So we can just multiply to find the final answer. So this will be the root of three over four in plus. Uh, when you multiply there, it gets the root of three over four as well. So when we do the addition there, uh, you're getting zero. So that's the answer. Okay. So thank you very much for 
change of pronunciation. I'll see if I can squeeze, rather if I can find some time uh, for me to come and finish up the instruction for you guys to know. I'll communicate to you in the group or I'll send you the text messages and all that later. Okay, so let's meet in the, in the other session tomorrow. I'm going to send the recorded sessions to the group. See you in the next session. Oh, rather, in the next lesson. <laughs>